You wanted it, you went for it, and baby you got it. I wanted it, I went for it, and baby I did it on my own. Did it on my own. On my own. You know it's us, yeah. Roll the intro. Oh, what's up, Crutch Activist? Kenzie Retro here, back with another film review. Don't worry, these film reviews are spoiler free, so you're in safe hands with me. So, where do we begin? Because we just had Turning Red release on Disney Plus today. And, oh, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, where do we even begin? So, uh, I've got my notes written down, so I'm going to try and keep this as brief as I can. So, uh, for those that don't know what Turning Red is, it is the latest offering from Disney and Pixar. It was due to be released in cinemas, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic and the virus and restrictions and variants and etc, etc, etc. Third Pixar film in a row to go straight to Disney+, Plus, which it's it's fine. It's fine. I just hope that... As I am, Fairly confident the same thing won't happen to light yet, and if that if it, if it ends up happening, I'll go back to this video and just and just start the video off by saying, well, this aged well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, we have got um, so yeah, um, anyway, so turning red, Pixar's latest offering, and oh my word, this. I said it when I was going through my most anticipated films of this year that uh, this this was just going to be a lot of fun. And I wasn't wrong. Growing Up is definitely a beast indeed, according to the promotional uh, poster. So, I mean... Uh, so, anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So, we are in 2002, and you've got uh, Maylin Lee, or May May, as her mother uh, calls her 13 years old, straight A student, um, and <laughs> I just love the sass that she comes out with right out the gate. I mean, just I mean, a lot of the stuff she has, she's like, she's got like something like a Tamagotchi there. Uh, everything just everything there just screams early 2000s, and having I mean, the Pixar team did a fantastic job at capturing the. Um, uh, capturing the uh, the culture of uh, the time. I mean, the humour in this film is just absolutely brilliant. I mean, like I said, the sass coming out of uh, Malin, just brilliant. I mean, even her friends, Miriam, Priya, and Abby, are just amazing as well. Abby can Abby can speak Korean. Yeah, go figure. And uh, and and uh, Miriam is like 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 like. I love Miriam as well, uh, and you've uh, got to say Priya. She's sort of like the um, the, the monotone, uh, deadpan emo girl. <laughs> but uh, but say, I love the personalities of these these characters. They're so so well written. I mean, Julia Cho and Domi Shi um, helping with the screenplay and the story as well. Uh, uh, Sarah Streicher. As well, helping with uh, alongside with the story, Domi Shi being um, is the sole director of this film, and it's it's the first Pixar film to be solely directed by um, a female director, and you can definitely tell that they went they went through a lot of attention to detail when it came to going through the the, the culture at the time, doing their research, and uh, of course like um, studying red pandas uh, themselves but um i mean honestly this this story had this story has a great moral a great moral um about uh, uh, embracing the more unconventional side of yourself i mean something something i'm definitely no stranger to um, but pixar and their emotional beats you can't separate the two you cannot separate the two uh but 
That being said, though, the emotional beats, they hit at the right point. Um, but, of course, the humour. The humour, the jokes, the innuendos for the adults. Absolutely phenomenal all round. And overall, it's just a great coming-of-age story for me as well. Uh, like I said, the characters are very, very well written. And they're very relatable as well. Especially uh, Malin's family, who... Um, Given given the culture of um, uh, given the culture of her family, um, st- like I say, straight A student, uh, just like being as best they can be, uh, and the cast that they got, then so the um, I say the cast that they got was uh, I mean the cast are fantastic. I mean you got James Hong, Sandra O, oh, Ava Morse. Uh, uh, Orion Lee, Wei Ching Ho, uh, and Rosalie Chiang uh, as uh, Malin herself. I mean, I love the casting, and like I say, the characters very well written and very relatable at the same time. The visuals, oh my word, the visuals—they look fantastic. And like I say, the vi- they look. I mean, um. I, I love the way the characters are designed. I mean, they, I said they're like more rounded, literally. <laughs> but uh, but even at that, uh, I said the visuals for um, for all the like the the dreamlike sequences throughout the film uh, as well, and um, and the transformations from Malin from girl to panda. I mean, I, I I love the attention to detail as well. The fact that they actually went through the, the trouble of giving her red hair as soon as she t- turns into a red into the red panda for the first time, because uh, the red panda is actually part of um, uh, her family's uh, history with with their uh, with their ancestors, um, and you know, so, uh, I, I love how they've I love how they've actually done that. I mean, the first time we see the transformation. Uh, which was shown in like the uh, the trailer, um, like one of one of the trailers for the film. It's um, I mean, it works, it works. I mean, it I mean, it comes across as really uh, intimidating, but oh my word, when we actually see her become the red panda, there is red panda cuteness overload, and those who know me well know I cannot handle the cuteness. There is too much cuteness for me to handle. Anyway. Uh, overall, cannot fault the visuals uh, as well. But like I said, and the, and the dreamlike sequences as well are fantastic as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it was inevitable I was going to be talking about this. Uh, yes, it's time to talk about the soundtrack. You wanted it, you went for it, and baby, you got it. The songs by the band Four Town are fantastic. Really catchy. Yes, I grew up with boy band music and I love boy band music. And this captured my love for boy band music at the time as well. I mean, this was peak boy band territory for me, like the early 2000s as well. I mean, Westlife was still at their peak. I mean, you had new boy bands coming onto the scene. You had Busted, McFly. Um, I think Backstreet Boys had a couple of tracks at the time as well. Justin Timberlake was about to go solo from NSYNC. Um, was I busted McFly? Uh, Westlife was still going. Uh, Blue, as well. And um, and this is just the U. And this is just some of the UK boy bands, uh, folks. But um, um, but yeah. Uh, I say um, doing a small bit of research. Uh, you've got um Anne Marie, uh, who's the um, uh, the pop singer. Uh, she actually voices uh Lauren. Who is one of May's friends and their classmates? Now, who does she? Who is she in place of? Come to think of it, um, hmm, not sure. But I'll, I'll try and find that out when I get round to doing this film in *The King of Isolation*. And and talking of which, folks, I know what you're thinking. Where's Where's Finding Nemo? Where's The Incredibles? They're gonna be up this weekend, folks. Don't worry. The films, the episodes are gonna be up this weekend. Hopefully I can get the lead, hopefully I can get Finding Nemo done today, um, up for Saturday, and then The Incredibles editing on the Saturday and then hopefully getting it up on the Sunday. But that being said, that being said, it's um, that being said, uh, the soundtrack is fantastic. Like I said, the 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 um, 
the four town uh the four town songs really catchy uh and an amazing score as well in terms of the uh, the composer ludwig Göransson. this is his first pixar uh, this is his first pixar credit to his name and he did a fantastic job with the um with the score he's actually got a couple of grammys um as well one of them he actually has a marvel credit to his name he actually has a grammy for doing the score for black panther so i mean that that kind of that's that's a pretty big deal folks that is a pretty big deal what else has he uh done so i'm going through his accolades the black panther um he helped he helped her with the song this is america from childish gambino um who is also known as uh, donald glover uh record of the year song of the year with the grammys uh he got three grammys that year in uh, 2019 uh got the oscar that year as well um he's he- he's helped do the uh, the music for the mandalorian as well um got a primetime emmy as well uh, uh well two primetime emmys actually for outstanding music composition for a series uh, and he's got a Grammy nomination for best score soundtrack for visual media for the se- for season two of uh, The Mandalorian. I mean, what an incredible choice for the composer for this film. And I was like, massive kudos to Pixar for getting such an amazing. I mean, we've got a new we've got a new composer in Pixar's ranks, and I'm already on board with it. Um, I mean, massive kudos to, like, the songwriters for Four Town Songs as well. One of them being Billie Eilish, believe it or not, folks. So, massive kudos to them. Overall, Pixar still on form, as always. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going with Lightyear coming out later this summer. This film gets a 10 out of 10 for me. If you haven't seen it yet, I definitely recommend giving it a watch. This is an absolute romp. There's a lot of hijinks. There's a lot of fun. Um... It's just absolutely fantastic all around. Cannot fault this film. We've already got a serious contender for film of the year for me. So that is it for this ep- for this edition of uh, my film reviews. The next film review I'm going to be doing is going to be Sing 2. Once I get around to sing- seeing the first one. Um, but yeah, that won't be until uh, next week at the earliest. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a creature activist like myself, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything that I do on this channel. Uh, Kingdom of Isolation next uh, this weekend. Finding Nemo and The Incredibles coming out. Uh, but until then, we'll see you guys next time. And as always, to stay, always remember to stay creature active. You want to do, you want to do, you